let's kick this. Uh, let's kick this off. Um, uh, Ray, welcome to the show. Bought some beers on a Friday. Um, I know it's uh, a.m. It's Friday a.m. Nine. It's nine a.m. Isn't it? Uh, ten from CST. Oh. Confidence base. Appreciate it. Yeah, I know. yeah, you're drinking coffee. Um, what yeah. I'm gonna do? I uh, cheers, bro. I'm uh, gonna pop this beer as a. It's, oh, hold on, let me. Just, I didn't open it yet, so I just like to do that on the call. So there you go, yeah, dude. Cheers. Let's. Um, to what? To what? <laughs> there we go. Cheers. Um, um, drink responsible, guys. Um, right on. So what we're gonna do today is we uh, we you have um, you're going to uncover your formula that you guys developed or you developed within the agency to uh, launch products using Messenger in, in the overall mix. Um, I think what we want to do today is we want to learn from you what you do, what you've learned, the strategies you developed, and we want to have a peek under the hood. Um, we want to open up the floor for anybody who has any questions. So guys, when you're watching this live, or when you're watching this in the replay, do make sure you ask the questions in the comments. We'll get the comments here. I'll be monitoring the comments, and we'll be pulling those questions on the screen so we can actually take it from there. Um, let me just make sure that take out this. But before we dive in, um, Ray, tell me a little bit more about your background. Tell me a little bit more about who you are, who's Ray, what you're doing, and how did you get to the Golden Chatbot formula? Sure. Yeah, that's that's a really good question. So let me kind of just catch you up to speed historically. So uh, I got started in digital marketing, self-taught, learning through trial and error, right? Learning through just hustling, learning everything I can get my hands on, reading, reading books, reading everything online, and to eventually, obviously, we, we met through an agency accelerator program. And then where we came to where we're at now with uh, chatbots is actually goes back to when me and you were hustling at the 2018 Conversations Conference, the Many Chats first. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fun, yeah. And, and I, had, I had been dabbling barely back then, but honestly, sitting next to you and you just getting so fired up and honestly recorrecting people who are actually speaking on policy, <laughs> which was hilarious to, to, to watch. Yeah. That's yeah. what really kind of ignited the fire. And so then what that journey was since then is – Inside internally at Right Hook is we've just been testing and refining what we what the the chatbot forming that we work and we use chatbots for a lot of things. Obviously, we use it for lead gen. We'll use it for gamification. But how we stumbled across it was actually a brand back in uh, right after the conversation. We were using chatbots just as a lead gen tool, and we happened to off the back of all this all this opt-ins that we got, we launched a new product. And it was honestly, it was just circumstance. Like it was just uh, kind of coincidental. And then it did so well. We're like, oh my gosh, I think we have something here. Yeah. And then cool. since then, we've been refining it and tweaking it to where now what we do is it's, part, it's, a, it's a core staple when we launch new products. And one of the reasons why I love it is obviously it's, it's conversational commerce. It's one-to-one. -one. But why I like it so much is that it's so much more intimate, right? Because like as a consumer, like when you see an ad, because like we, we drive ads, essentially like we're, we're a growth agency, like we get paid to run campaigns. And as a consumer, when you see an ad, it's kind of, it, it's, there's nothing intimate about it, right? It's kind of, um, it's frankly <laughs> just like, it's like you see ads all the time, right? It's like, you don't think anything about it, but when you get something in your actual messenger inbox, that's when like as a brand, like you can touch someone, you can have that one-to-one, -one. you can actually, not only you can generate feelings, you can generate responses, they can communicate with you. And that's when like, I just, I really got turned on to it because that's what also why we started seeing such great results because people felt like that there's an the intimate connection. And you yeah. know, the traditional like marketing tale where it's like you need seven to nine connections, whatever it is now, like to get someone to actually make a purchase. But bot, in my opinion, it's a way to almost expedite that process because like they're intimately involving with you, asking questions, as well as, and I'll get into this later, but you're literally training them to think how you want them to think and think and training them how you want them to interact with you. And so uh, t over the past really year, as we refined this, this product launch formula, 
we started looking at looking at all the success thing. Okay, wait a second. I think this isn't a fluke. I'm, and we started tracking and documenting every process to where we have a super high success rate right now when, when we launch a new product. Obviously, there's there's caveats to that, you know. No, you know drop because, look, the strategies is, and you already mentioned, it's trial and error. And it's super Absolutely. easy. We're going we're gonna to talk about the successes and, and the stuff that works. But what I think is also cool and, and super valuable to share is what what didn't work for you and, and why. Do you have any examples sort of top of mind um, that sort of, that, on paper was a good idea, but then sort of tanked? Absolutely. So the first one is, I think you'll probably appreciate this, not abiding by the 24 plus one rule back before it was 24 plus one. You know, that's the scenario right now on my hands as well. Yeah. That, that was number one. Another one would be, to, and I'll, I'll get into this a little bit deeper. It's not thinking about the strategy of how we're actually, go, one, going to actually get the opt-ins, but really reverse engineering, what's the amount of opt-ins we need to hit like a certain revenue threshold? Yeah. So you can, and this is where like, I buy into the keep it simple stupid, because yeah. while some of you guys, in this, and especially in your bots and views group, are really good at building bots, I buy into, because the consumer, you want things to be simple, so one of the lessons I've learned through trial and error is if you try to, overcomplicate the flow more so than what the consumer really needs it's going to tank like keep it very simple and high value and it'll always be successful dude that's that's a great advice guys if you're not taking notes if you're, if you're taking any, if you're not taking anything from this call take this keep it simple and i know i mean i i i run into that myself i mean there's always some oh we could do this and we could do that and we can add some conditional logic there and in the end you sort of you get stuck in hey why isn't this working or why isn't this working as expected and you're going to lose hours on that start with the basics first run traffic through that and hold, always have the consumer and the end goal in mind and keep in mind messenger is the conversational tool that's the thing that counts make it valuable i love that man um just no, before, Sorry. Real quick, I think you'll appreciate this. One of the greatest split tests I ever did. I was trying to do a gamification funnel, and so I had mm -hmm. I had I had twelve questions, <laughs> and you're probably laughing right now. You're like, "Holy crap, that's a lot of questions, dude!" Yeah. You know, for lead gen, and and it tanked so bad, and so I cut it down to four questions, and it tripled the results. Right, so. That was a hard lesson learned, like, dude, like consumers, and I even have people messaging me saying, dude, this quiz is too long. <laughs> 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 no, that's the whole thing. And, and what, what I what I like about sort of keeping it simple is we need to look at the sort of, the, we need to look at the bigger picture. If we're not, um, if we do not, for example, get that email or the SMS consent now, it doesn't necessarily matter because we should have a follow-up touch point at some point where we can tie that in. And what I see, what I often see is that we try, or, or, or sort of marketers try to cram everything in one flow just to get that sort of that consent or just to get that little extra little thingy there, but then it breaks the UX and then it sort of defeats the whole purpose of the conversational flow. Be awesome, create value, and when you do that, people will interact with you, and they and you will aggregate the data as you move forward. I have a really good question. For you one of my you mentioned, you, know, you mentioned you mentioned data opt in, getting people's opt in. There's yeah. different trains of thought. You you know where I stand on it because we we talked about this before. But I'd love to hear your thought on getting data consent at the very beginning of a flow, or building it in to get it incrementally later on. What do you think? Uh, incrementally later on, hundred percent. And we have something. And you didn't. You didn't. No. So, and this is what. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop a video on this. Uh, so, and we didn't. We, so, this is sort of a coincidence. You asked this, but I'm gonna drop a video on this uh, sort of next week. And it's what we, what I called, coined the phrase conversation starter. And it's it's a follow up flow that that fires off within a specific time frame in the 24 hour window and it could be an hour it could be a minute it depends a little bit on the situation but the conversation starter flow is a follow-up flow after a specific action that then asks for consent to market through sms and email and there's some conditional logic in there that looks because my goal is to leverage the 24-hour window as much as possible 
somebody comes in, they have a question, they have a specific intent, we fulfill the intent, whatever it is, but then we have that 24 hour window and I want to leverage the 24 hour window as much as possible to get that consent. And I think we developed a super simple, again, keep it simple, stupid, simple mm -hmm. follow up flow, which I call a conversation starter that works like a charm. And that gets that consent to market through SMS and email. Um, and hence the question, I, I would do it later on, but leverage the 24 hour window because you're going to need those opt-ins later on for whatever you're going to do, whether it's SMS or email, preferably both. Yeah. I'm a, and you'll see that see this later on guys and people that are watching is when you have someone in the flow, this is again, another train of thought that I buy into is I, I have a phrase that my team probably hears too much and that is never miss an opportunity. And so what, what I mean by that is if you have an opportunity to capture someone's data, email, this email SMS, obviously and where it makes sense, do it because it's, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. That's how I like to say it. Yeah. And especially when it comes to conversation commerce, you need that email, that SMS to get them to re-engage again. Like there's other factors you can do like a sponsored ad to the, those um, PSIEs, yeah. but you really want that data capture. Cause like that's, that's how you're going to keep re-engaging them and obviously cut down those touch points to the eventual conversion. Yeah, but and, and are we on the same page that you, you leverage the 24 hour window to get that data? Yeah, so so th there's actually a couple ways that we're testing it right now. And the reason why I asked you that because we don't have a definitive conclusion yet. So the, the case studies that I'm gonna show you guys and, and the flow, I go for an opt-in of data earlier on. So most of how we do it is like for a product launch, people are opting in for a specific reason. Um, obviously for a product launch and there's certain psychological triggers why they're they're wanting to opt into it. So to opt into it, that's where I'm capturing an email or a phone number. And we're testing capturing only email, capturing only SMS, capturing both. But then we're also testing capturing just one and then following back up with, in that 24 hour window to capture the, the next part of data and or not capturing data, but then just follow up with the people that keep re-engaging the 24 plus 24. So that we're testing both. And to be honest with you, I don't have a definitive conclusion yet. I, I lean more towards get the most minimum amount of data that you need at the very front end. 100%. And then once you have that data, then you can build out getting the rest of it, but always, always, always get some form of data and opt-in. Well, yeah, 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 hundred. I agree. What and this is my take on this is fulfill the intent first. Fulfill the intent. Answer the question. Deliver the value. D deliver what, why the person is actually there. Get that done first. Make sure you do that the best as possible. Then you have twenty four hours to send those follow ups, and that is what what I call the conversation starter. And the conversation starter in in how I designed it, it just gives you sort of. It, it asks you for your preferences. So you can choose if you want to get notified through SMS and email or only SMS or only email. And if you previously already opted into SMS, for example, you will not be asked to opt in for SMS because we already have that. So I will ask you to opt in for email versus, and then if you opted into both already, then you're not going to get that message. Well, I'll, I'll do the video on that. This is. The do, you, do you ever have? Do you ever like have gated, gated content or a gated opt-in that they have to give some form of data first, and then you follow up with the conversation starters to get the rest of it? No, I always give people the option. For example, lead magnets. When when I did quite a few lead, lead gen campaigns for Botfather back in the days and. Brace yourself, guys, because it's coming back. Is I give you, I give you the choice. Um, lead magnet. Here's your lead magnet rate. But would you want to receive it through email as well? Um, and it's the same thing we're doing with Palau, with sort of the, the dive resort in in Palau. Long story. If you've been here a while, you know about Palau. Um, and, and what we see there is that seventy percent, eighty percent of the people, the majority, actually wants to receive the lead magnet in email or via email as well. So we aggregate those email addresses and build our email lists and, and get consent to market from there. So it's more sort of an intuitive, intuitive flow. I give people sort of, I want to give people sort of the freedom to, to decide what their notification preferences are. And as long as your content is valuable and, you, and you're not bullshitting, then you will get, you will get sort of that 
um, intuitive opt-in. That's how I see it. Gotcha. Yep, seventy percent is pretty high, and uh, that's really, that really high. Yeah, and I I know we've talked about this before, but I really like your angle on asking them to either update or whatever their their um, notifications on, on how they like to receive content from you. I think that's very clever. I haven't necessarily tried that. Are maybe because we're direct response campaign, like where we run campaigns, I'd say our, where I'm gonna debate with you a little bit is we, we go for the data, some form of data capture first as a gated piece to get the opt-in just yeah. because if, if they come out of the flow, that means we have to spend money again to get them back in the flow. Whereas if we can capture some kind of data, then then we'll have that and we can actually send it to them cheaper than if we actually did an ad. So that's where it'd be interesting. Maybe we should take this offline and actually run a test. Yeah, let's take a really guys were probably, yeah. No, that's good. Cool. Well let, let's we, we I got some ideas about that. I'm curious guys, so people are on the call here, um I don't have my Facebook open because I only see B Live. We got quite a few people here. Um could, could you drop in the comments uh, what your how we, how would you approach this? Would you sort of gate content for uh, a phone number or an email address or would you rather give it after i'm just curious what you sort of what your scenario is what your experience is with this um ray that said are you ready to sort of spill um let's do it spill the beans what are we gonna do? so let me let me start off by saying this so what we're going to do is i'm going to show you guys the the core pillars of our product launch formula and then I'm going to actually show you the flows that are the template flow that we use for all of our product launches. Now, like I said, because we run campaigns, there's another component here that I'm not necessarily going to show you. And that's like that's you know the campaign structure, launching it, that the bidding. That's something. If you have a question, feel free to ask Rudger in the comments, and like we can dive in there. Ask but you. the real, yeah, the, the the secret of the product launch formula. Like you probably heard me say it before, it's it's really not in how the flow and like all these offshoots and the, the conditional logic. It's important. It's very important, and we have specific steps of how we do that. But but the secret of our product launch formula that's made over a million dollars is actually in in the, in the stages that we call the the setup, which is the pre teasing, and then it's in the psychology, it's in the list building, and it's in that after you get people into the opt in. And if you have their data, how do you keep them engaged and, and keep them warm and give value to them, right? Like those are the, the secrets and the keys. We tested it. And if you don't have those components, which I'm going to show you first, the flow is not going to convert like you want it to. And we're, we've seen as high as 14 to 20% conversion rates of people who are opting into these flows. And so we know it works. So what I'm going to show you guys is the most important keys is the core pillars. And then we're going to actually show the execution part of the flow. Awesome. Hey, dude, you're going to talk about attribution as well, isn't it? Yes. Make sure make sure you have me bring that up because that's a deep rabbit hole. But I think it'll be really interesting to get some of the watchers take on it as well because we have a unique view of how we have to view attribution for this. And I, ha I have a couple of calculators for you guys as well that I'll like to preview. So I think you guys might get value from. But yes, let's talk about attribution. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm just going to double check. I'm going to throw the presentation on the screen. Hold on. Cool. Hold on. Let me know what, when it's looking good. Right on, Ray. Can you still hear me? Cool. Yep. We're good to go. Good. Right on, bro. It's all yours. Floor is yours. Cool. All right, guys. So I'm going to simply show you how you have to think about launching a product launch and to use our formula. And there's four core pillars that we use. And this is essentially we've tried this, we've tested it. We've refined it, and the four core pillars are the must-haves you need to do this well. So the first one is actually the psychology, which I'll go through that in a second. It's the timing. So we have at certain stages of the product launch, we have certain things that happen, and I'll walk through that. And then we actually have the list building, how you need to think about it, how you need to reverse engineer your revenue goal that you want for this product launch, all the way down to What's my cost I need to spend on advertising? What's the cost per lead that I need or the cost per opt-in that I need to hit that certain goal? And then we're gonna actually, excuse me, the last one was talk about the value, okay? So let's talk about the psychological triggers. So this is one of the most important parts of actually making this work well. So we buy into the thought at Right Hook of using psychology in the advertising, obviously both for acquisition, but also even for lead gen. So the, the psychological triggers that we use most often for these flows 
is FOMO, anticipation, scarcity, novelty, exclusivity, curiosity, and social proof. So let me give you examples. So for example, for FOMO, what we'll say throughout this campaign of a product launch, and so we think of things as an entire campaign so that there's the how we get people to opt in, there's the actual flow, and then there's the actual when we launch and go live. So FOMO will, for example, as a simple example, is this will sell out, right? As a consumer, you don't want to miss out on that. So you want to take advantage of that because you don't want it to sell out. Another one of anticipation would be a countdown. So for example, what we'll do for some of our clients is when it's getting closer to a sale, we'll have a countdown. We'll keep, you know, we'll send SMS or email after they've opted in through the many chat bot So yes. how, how are you how are you dripping the content? How are you dripping these psychological triggers to to your audience? That's a great question. So what we'll do is before every launch, we'll we'll say, okay, what are the psychological triggers to use for this particular campaign? Right? Because we'll use ones that are truthful, never gonna lie. But and I'll go through some examples in a second. But what we'll do is we'll make sure. So let's say, for example, we're going to use FOMO and anticipation as the psychological triggers. We'll make sure whatever we use to get people to opt in, we'll make sure that it's there. And then in the flow, we're making sure that we're mirroring that same FOMO and anticipation to keep to you know to make sure that there's that um, that message match. And then to answer your question, how we drip feed it is we try to get some form of data at the very beginning because most product launches we want them to not think that oh everybody's going to have access to this we want it to feel like it has some exclusivity to it or that you have to do something to get it because it's so special it's so awesome so that's where for them to even get on this list to be the first to know or whatever we capture some form of data and that data is what we use to drip feed it so we'll use if it's an email We'll use that that email to keep them warm up until live. But then also what we'll do is once they opt in, obviously with the PSIDs, that's where we will um, do uh, sponsored messages. Yeah, obviously, that's a paid ad. We'll do um, ads where like video views to these people as well. So while even though we have the 24-hour window, we'll, we will schedule a flow to hit those people within that 24-hour window after they initially opt in to get them to re-engage we'll run an ad or an email or whatever data we have to keep those people informed or to get them to opt into the flow again. Hey, you keep mentioning, or you keep mentioning, you've, you, you mentioned uh, PSIDs a few times. How are you creating these custom, website custom audience? Are you still exporting those PSIDs or are you cr using the sort of the native uh, ManyChat option to create audiences? Yeah, so we were using the PSIDs where we had to actually upload them. And then when main chat rolled out the option to we can do the custom audiences, we started we started doing that. Yeah. Another simple way, obviously, is just doing a custom audience in Facebook of anyone who messages the page. But with some of our brands, they do so much volume of customer service through Messenger, anyways. Yeah. We won't do that necessarily, and then we'll just use many chats native. Okay. Awesome. Great. Yeah, stuff. Great question. Yep. And then so scarcity. This is content that we like to use. Is if the particular product sold out, tell them this sold out in three hours last time. Because what you're doing is again, and this is why I love conversational commerce. Yes, it's intimate and the consumer feels like they are intimately interacting with you. However, as a brand that, and you're really training your people as well, just like a relationship, right? I'm friends with Rudger and interacting with Rudger you know, we, we've developed a relationship, we know how to talk to each other, we know how to interact, because why? Because that relationship, that intimacy, we've built this understanding of how to work with each other. Just like that, a brand, you're teaching them how to act. So we, so if we can say that a product has some scarcity, we will literally say, this product sold out in 15 hours last time. That's training your consumers that, oh man, I better be ready and waiting if I want this product. Yeah. Another example. Hey, I'm sorry, I got a question, man. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I got, I got a question. Oh, Are you using the the native ManyChat features to sort of use the email, the SMS to create this uh, omni-channel strategy, or are you using sort of the CRMs from the clients, like Clavio, Active Campaign? What are you? How? What tools are you using? Yeah, great, great question. So, if most of our clients, they'll be on most of them are on Clavio, so we'll use uh, a Zap. Uh, to send them over to Clavio, and then we do that way. 
a lot of our clients right now, they'll may have their own third party SMS. And if they don't have an API or they have some data restrictions on how, on if you, you can use their platform with subscribers that you've, you've sent them, then what we'll do is most of the time we just use many chats, native SMS that they have now. Yep. It, it kind of depends on the situation, but for this scenario, what we do is if it's easier just to use many chats, we'll use the email and the SMS because it's a lot easier to build. You don't have to worry about any gated restrictions on another third party. Everything exactly. is there. That, that's and right. that yeah. Yeah. It's just more efficient. I'm not necessarily saying it's better, but it's more efficient, especially because you don't have to fuck around with ref URLs and everything. Absolutely. You can just use the many chat sort of features to sort of seamless uh, creating that omnichannel experience again. I'm not saying it's better or 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 worse than anything else. So I'm just curious what you were using. Yeah, and so what we'll do typically is a lot of our clients they use a third-party SMS that ties into like their product feed or their actual purchase history. Well, of course, many chat you you can work to do that, and I know with your beef B Rudger, like you're making strides for that. So what we do typically is just for the campaign, we'll just use S we'll just use many chat. But then any for like post purchase flows for SMS, then we'll use the client's other third party. Yeah. So that's kind of how we keep it separate. Just it makes it easier. So yeah. we can be as fast and agile as we need. Yeah, it makes sense. So, What's your favorite SMS tool? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting you. Um, no, 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 please. So our favorite right now it, for me is Postscript. I know yeah. Clavio has theirs, and we've barely experimented with it. I like Postscript, ties in very, and I think if, if you use Clavio's, it can do very similarly. But I personally like Postscript for Shopify consumers is the flows, in my opinion, you can build based off of product data, cross-selling, upselling, um, exclusive offers, high high VIP, dollar value type consumers. It's very easy to use. Yeah. And we see like, dude, some of, some of these SMS flows that we're doing, we're seeing 60% conversion rate. It, like, it literally kind of blows my mind. Yeah, and that's why, yeah. and that's, that's why I love this conversational commerce because dude, like it's so intimate. People are getting notifications. Like they're like it's so much better than seeing an ad. Like it's like you're peeing someone, you're touching someone every single time yeah. you send them something, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. Yeah. and and, and I think that is what we as as marketers and as as let's say chat marketers or conversational marketers, we need to embrace. We need to embrace that omni-channel strategy. It's not just messenger anymore. There are so many tools out there, email, SMS, Facebook marketing, whatever, to create those touch points, to create exactly the flow you have here on screen. So, dude, this is gold. This is awesome. This is what we sort yep. of, we need to we need to approach this more holistic and look at that 360 sort of omni-channel strategy to um, uh, to hit that one million dollar mark like you guys did to uh, to be truly successful. Yeah, and and just a big point, Rudger. It never would have happened if we hadn't taken the omni-channel approach. Nope. I see I see a lot of people, they'll just do a bot and try to just to get you buy from the bot. And like they stick just to what whatever they built inside that flow. And they're missing it on so much opportunity and literally money. Yeah. And again, like if you buy into the approach of, you know, if I can touch people so many times to get a, a conversion, you need those different approaches. So for example, yeah. like someone asked me just just the other day. Hey Ray, why, why would I do Messenger and SMS? It's the same thing. No, it's not. It, there's different levels of intimacy in it, 100%. as well. As people behave differently to Facebook Messenger and text messaging. Well, there's something I want to add to this because, and that is, um, and and I'll back it up with an example we have now. Is this should be an this should. Be, Getting those, getting that consent to market through different channels, getting that data, and this is probably what where, where, what we were talking about sort of five minutes ago, should be a core part of your strategy, because you don't want to start getting consent to market through these these different channels when you launch the new product. When you launch a new product, you should be able to tap into those pockets through SMS, email, messenger website custom audience, et cetera. So whatever you're doing in your marketing strategy should sort of the baseline should be that you always get those uh, those opt-ins. An issue we are running into now, and that is why we should look way beyond just Facebook Messenger, an issue we are running into now, we are running, um, and we've been running this for a while, 
is um, a course, digital product related to poker, poker code. Yeah. Well, we can mention it here, it's all good, no problem. Yeah. These guys, um, they're crushing it. They got an awesome product, but product is being launched, big push behind it. We have a quiz, opt-in through messenger, opt-in through email. It's a three-day drip. Mm. What do we see? There was no, there were no previous SMS opt-ins. There was an email list, but we all know that email gets lost. Email just mm -hmm. gets lost. I'm not saying that the the, the 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 channel is dead or it's not working. It's, that's not true. But we do see across the board that email the open rates are 20, 30, 30 percent, and then you're doing really well. That means 70 percent doesn't even get opened. So the Messenger opt-ins, obviously they are great, but last week, three days ago, wasn't even last week, we opened up ManyChat and we got that little orange bar at the top of our page. Oh no. What happened, media buying, so we, we're not doing the media buying, we're just sort of the automations and, and the structure. Media buying scaled up the ad spend, possibly hit a bad pocket of an audience, the quiz dripped for three days using tags, confirmed uh -huh. event update. What happened, there was a spike in negative feedback, which means we got the warning. And now we sort of scaled back in terms of using message tags. And now what we see is that 60%, 60% of follow-up messages in Messenger are not able to be delivered because people really? are just not engaging enough. Mm. That can be solved with the proper omnichannel strategy using email, using messenger, using custom audiences, using sponsored messaging. That is why you need it. Do not put your eggs in one basket that is called messenger because something just can go wrong, whatever it is, with, with outside of your control and you're not able to send those messages anymore. So that is why and then I'm going to give it back to you, Ray. But just something we ran into uh, recently is that think about this omni-channel strategy. Look at getting those opt-ins as early as possible, but do it continuous, and then leverage it when you have um, when you're doing a product launch. Yeah, you brought up a good point. Is even well, I, this is a mistake, and I love to hear your thoughts from a group. I see a lot of people make is let's say. Let's say they do have their SMS data and they have their email data, right? And so they're sending them a message and they're re-opting them into Facebook Messenger and they're, they're still not taking advantage of uh, opportunity to glean more information from them. Maybe you ask them a question and then you tag them, right? And you send that tag to your email partner or whatever mm -hmm. is like what Riker said, always you know, one, like your people are building out flows, but they're also not thinking about, okay, what can I do to understand these people better so I can serve them better going forward? Yeah, it's an ongoing process. And, and what, I, what I see often is it stops with when you get the opt-in. Now we got the opt-in, boom. Now we can sort of bang them with our products and our services and, and, and well, and then, things can go wrong and then you wake up to sort of the banner in your ManyChat account that you're not in to send messages anymore. Think about that guys. Just think about how you can add value because when you run these product launches, you want long story short, then Ray, I'm gonna give it back to you, is you need to earn the right to sell. Earn the right to yeah. sell. And when you have earned the right to sell, your open rates, your click-through rates, your conversion rates, they will increase, they will improve 100%. But you need to earn the right to sell previous for your product launch. launch. Sounds easy, sounds obvious, but I see it every time. I, I don't see it every time, but I see it all the time. The, um, people have, especially sort of agencies with new clients, client has a new product, doesn't have any sort of authority established, and they want to sell a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar product. Well, good luck with that to an yeah. audience. Sort of build your audience, keep them engaged, add value, get those consents and respect those consents and um, 
keep being awesome and so then sell to them. Yeah, and a simple rule to live by for all of you guys listening is remember this is conversational commerce. And if you personally wouldn't want to engage with the flow you're building, why the heck would anybody else? <laughs> well, <that's> so, <laughs> I love seriously, that. like yeah. it's every time you make an email, an ad, a flow, whatever it is, if you personally wouldn't want to engage with it or read it, why the heck would anybody else? And that's yeah. why guys like remember, like you're you're talking to real people. Have fun with it. Make it make it so that you personally would just like think of how, make if it's funny, make make it sure that you think it's funny. If it's engaging, you know, make sure like you're asking the type of questions where like, oh yeah, like I love to answer that kind of question. Yeah. Like, just live by that rule and I promise you you'll see a drastic increase in whatever you build. And and Ray, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are about this. Invest upfront. Invest yes. up front in building sort of the authority, building the report, adding value. And and I translate that into earn, earn the right to sell. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I'm a huge proponent of it. So one of the core pillars is actually adding value. And the reason why that is, is yes, you know, we have great tools to get sales. And yeah, a lot of people make, they make really good money from it. And a lot of brands make really solid money. But from my experience, what we've seen make the big difference is what you said, Rugger, people that are investing and adding value. And, and guys, and value doesn't have to be, I'm gonna give them a discount code or an offer. Value is, it's, it's subjective to be honest with you. It's what the consumer yeah. finds valuable. And so that's where value could be something as, um, here, let me show you how I made this product for you. It could be something where, hey, I'm going to, anyone who buys a product and this is more like monetary i'm going to give you this for free it could be hey i'm going to do something funny some of our best brands they're just making content that's just funny if you think about it especially during COVID 19 people they want entertainment so entertainment is value um, inspiration is value dude uh, i give you an example it's crazy so we got the the, the, the dive operator in palau yeah i'm, I'm, I'm sort of yep. whatever long story short the the boys did a video 40 seconds dancing underwater cheesy as oh my God. it went by i mean it had sixty thousand views 1k shares and wow. it sort of it blew up Shit doesn't always have to be sort of sell stuff it needs to be engaging it needs to be fun it needs to be real and I guarantee you this this specific video, again, it, it, it's super simple, but it went through the roof. Now, the thing with that is people will remember that. People will remember oh, yeah. that video. And, and so I love, and I remember, and this is a couple of years ago that I remember sort of you guys sort of did a video, a thank you video with a guy drinking uh, beer and, and yep. that was sort of a post-purchase thank you video that, I don't know, that went through the roof as well. And that's that. Still, that's a core staple now in our funnels as well. Is and so, and it really goes down to it. It's what adds value. So that thank you video. So this for all you guys listening. One of the, our our standards is for the brands we work with. We ask them to film a thank you video and you just where from the owner or the founder saying, guys, thank you so much for purchasing. No. It's it's because of you. We do what you or whatever they say, and we will just run that video of you as an ad, or you can put it in. We, now we put it in an SMS. We're not asking for anything. Just saying thank you for buying. Like it's because of you that we can do X, Y, and Z. Those conversion rates yeah. of that thing, you're not asking for anything are freaking through the roof. Yeah. You're not asking for anything. You're just saying thank you. That is value. You don't need to ask for something when you give value. So another example. Um, we we have a brand where I get to add value, and I, I know we're going to rabbit trail, but this is this it's important where they will just to add value <laughs> they will do a live or a video whatever it is um, and they will just tell stories storytelling adds value for example it's a female brand they work with um you know they sell to other moms and they're talking and they'll add value by saying talking about their struggles with being a mom the, the funny stuff that their kid did the other day right that adds value and it's because of that value that that's where people will know, like, and trust you, and they'll be adhered, and they'll be um, intimately bonded with your brand. So, 
and another another example. One of our clients, they when a, a, a video of theirs went viral, and they're, they're just ranting. They're ranting about how you know women be more independent. That's value adding, and they're not asking for a single sale, but people just happen to buy because of it. It's just what it is. I mean, but the, the thing, the issue where I think a lot of people are running into is that they have the pressure of a client. Yes. Whereas if you're an agency, you got a client, the client comes to you and say, and I've seen this, I've seen this question, these, this type of question come up hundreds of times, if not thousands of times throughout the years, is I got a client who's going to launch a product in six weeks and they want to make X. How am I going to make this happen? There's yeah. nothing in place, and that that pressure that is sort of that, that that's an issue, and you need to sort of you need to be able to stand your ground and and go or two things stand your ground and tell the client I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take on this project because it's just not gonna happen. There's no way mm. we can sort of we can sort of lay the groundwork in six weeks and 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 get to your goals if you if you want to sort of uh, adjust your goals. And then we can do it. But I think there are a lot of people out there that are like, oh fuck, let's let's take on this client. Let's let's make the best out of this. What is your advice for this? People who work with clients that have high expectations, no groundwork, nothing to go off of, who want to do a product launch and make hundred million, thousand, gazillion dollars. Yeah. So I get into into a little bit in the pillar of. Um, of building your audience. So th there's a lot of unknowns when you're doing this for the first time. And and uh, I screw it. I'm, I'm gonna skip to that slide. How's that? Let me skip yeah. to that slide. Since we're talking. Okay, so this is, guys, this is the list building pillar, okay? So a lot of our brands are e-commerce. This can be lead gen. You can still draw a lot of the same similarities, okay? So for example, you know, the classic equation to make more money is whatever traffic you can drive, that can be leads, that can be whatever, times your conversion rate, times your average order value, essentially is the revenue, okay? So that's like for most businesses, that's always gonna be what your formula is to make more money, okay? So the things that are gonna impact, if, you wanna, if you're doing this for the first time, based off the question you asked, Rudiger, is you know, what's the size of people you can get into your funnel? Because if you're doing it for the first time, you're not gonna know how are people gonna engage with me, right? So you have to do some kind, you have to like almost build benchmarks for the first time. But where I see a lot of brands going wrong, and you touched on this already, is they want to launch and they want to make a gazillion dollars in six weeks, right? And they're not adequately willing to invest, which you said, invest in building the value, building, you can call it awareness, you can call it traffic, whatever you want. They're not willing to invest in it to make that gazillion dollars. So for example, when, when we want to work with a brand, um, Okay, let me say this first is a lot of brands go wrong as well is they want to make a gazillion dollars but they're not willing to an intimately invest and what i mean by that is th there's two sides of a coin you have one the type of people where they just want to throw something up there and make money but they're not willing to i'm going to use deposit and someone's emotional bank account so we talk about that internally a lot where as a consumer before i even buy from a brand like i need to feel some kind of a connection or, or it could be a great offer, but I need to have something deposited in my emotional bank account that's valuable to me, right? And then the, the more it happens from a brand, the more I'm, I'm one step closer to actually, you know, buying from that brand. And so a lot of brands go wrong is they don't, they're not willing to invest, number one. And number two, what I see a lot as well, is brands who have built up to a, sustain, a, a significant level and they want to get into conversational commerce or bot commerce and for whatever reason, they they're so stuck of whether it's um, they're afraid to fail, but they're not willing to let their hair down and really like be relaxing and have fun and conversate and uh, converse with people in bots and try new things. Like they think it has to be like this really rigid, and actually it ends up flopping because they're not willing to add that value. So like that's kind of two sides to the coin. And then when you asked if someone's new, what they have to think about is also you got to think about like the cost per opt-in. So for example. And I can show you guys a calculator after uh, we go through some of these slides. Is when a brand that we work with says, "Hey, I've got this product. I've got a thousand units, you know, and if the retail value is, let's say, it's like eighty thousand dollars, for example, whatever it is." They'll say, "Okay, cool. I want to sell it, 
But what we'll do is, okay, we'll take, so, okay, to do that, we need to invest this much amount of money in building value from people to get them interested in it. And so that's like, that's what we call the pre-stage where a month in advance, we're building the awareness, we're building the psychological triggers. We are getting people excited about it, getting, adding value to them so that when they opt in, then, then the rest of the budget that we, re that we recommend to a client is then on the actual getting them to buy. So, so you have to think about reverse engineer so because you know, six weeks before the launch, we do, we start building the list. And so this guys, this is gold. If you're, and I know a lot of you on this call will work with clients or have worked with clients that have these expectations that they need, get, they need to get shit done in three weeks. Tell them this story, exactly this reverse engineer this and, 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 and just get the data on the table and show them that it's not realistic. Yep. So also things to think about is if, and I can't tell you how many times we've done this where your conversion rate of the people who opt in is directly related to how well you build the hype. And that goes back to the psychological triggers. That goes back to how you keep them engaged and warm. If you, if, if you can't build the hype and, you, and this is, if so people don't often invest enough on the front end to get people on the list and they totally don't invest enough on adding value to people once they opted in and how well you can build that hype is directly related to how well your product's going to launch, okay? As well as, like I said, how well you keep them at a value. And then any additional bundles, that's a significant factor when it comes to actually um, how much revenue you want to make. But let me quickly go back to the psychological triggers because I want to finish this because I think you guys will get a lot of value. So where we left off was on the exclusivity is, again, these are just tools in your toolbox on how you're going to launch your product. So we'll oftentimes... If, if it's going to be a new launch, we'll say VIPs get first dibs or the first thousand people to do this will get this, right? Again, that's why you add this value that you're adding to people as well as curiosity. To unlock this, you have to do this or sign up to see this new design that we're launching next month, whatever that is. And then this is my favorite one. This is my favorite psychological trigger that I love to use is when people are opting in, we tell our audience, guys, we only made a thousand of these, but two thousand you have signed up <laughs> as you want to buy this, right? Yeah, that's a <laughs> filthy one, man. It is my favorite one because <laughs> one, I'm training people, like I said, to dude. I when this they go live, I better be at my computer or my phone to click buy right now because I may miss out. And so, and so the reason why I went back to this real quick off your question, Rudger, is if, if you guys are going to do this for the first time how well you can add these triggers into the opt-ins in the flows and keeping people warm is directly related to how well your success and your if your launch is going to be and also how much profit and revenue you make wow. okay and just for so, record this what you're seeing here the psychological triggers are pushed through different channels email ads messenger sms etc so it's an omni-channel strategy 100 percent. absolutely so i tip how it typically goes and you have some examples of this is we guess you know we do psychological trigger on the front end in the flows we do it, and then in the engaging, my favorites is to send them an email talking about, uh, picking a psychological trigger, talking about how last time they sold out an X number of hours, okay? And then we'll send them an SMS to get them to re-engage a messenger, and then if they re-engage a messenger, we'll talk about, guys, we're kind of stressing right now, you know, what we have a 1,000 of you, but 2,000 of you have signed up, so why don't you go ahead and mark this on your calendar, okay? And then, and then what we'll do from there is then, well, my favorites is then we have the client do a Facebook Live within 24 hours after sending that initial SMS so we can tell people that opted in from the SMS to go watch the live. And that's where they'll take their product and show a demo. Again, adding value, talking about the inspiration behind it, talking about, again, how they're afraid they're going to sell out even faster this time. Again, adding the value, keeping them warm, keeping them engaged. And it's doing those things, that's what actually makes this whole thing work really consistently and successfully. Dude, I love it. It's amazing. So what I want to do is kind of you guys through the timing. So uh, this is where we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. And through tried and, tried and true method, we have kind of figured out the best way to do this targeting. And how it works is, so we're planning a one month out. And I'm encouraging everyone listening the, if you skip out on the proper teasing 
it will not be as successful if you plan this. In fact, my opinion is if you can plan out even six weeks out, but you keep people warm and build the hype, that's even better. I can't tell you how many brands where they've sold out in one hour or they've sold out you know, in 24 hours. Like one brand, they did 80,000 in an hour because we really built that hype. Or another brand, they actually did 90,000 in 45 minutes and they completely sold out because so much of that hype was being built from the very beginning all the way through the flows, all the way through the follow-up, all the way through the actual launch day. So one month out, our recommendation is first tell all of your old customers and all of your old purchasers. And, or if you're doing running ads, all old site visitors. Now, the big question I have for you, Rutger, is can you imagine why we do this? This is kind of a thought-provoking question for you. I lever leverage your existing clients. Yes, yes, that, that is the number one reason. But there's a, another reason why we do this first. And so I'll show you in the next one. Uh, and so two weeks out, this, that's when we go to warm. We go to your email list and we go to five visitors. Now, the reason why we do this is if we, and again, we work with e-commerce brands. If we tell everyone at the same time, we're launching this new product. And if there's enough hype behind it, we actually found that if we don't time who sees it when, well, I, that client will actually suffer cash flow because everybody's waiting for that day. So we t we time how we tell people these things so we don't so we can keep cash flow up yeah. so that yeah. So for example, so then two weeks out, we'll again we run ads. So then we'll do the email list because if we do the email list too soon their email conversion rate is gonna drop off a cliff until that sell comes. And so we don't wanna sacrifice that revenue and cash flow, so we time this very strategically. And again, we run ads, so we exclude anyone who has purchased or visited in the last 30 days. And the reason why, again, is because if someone purchased in the last 30 days, we found that they will purchase it again if, if you tell them about it um, when it's really close to that date. And so again, we don't wanna sacrifice short-term revenue and then one week out, that's where we will actually then target cold audiences, get people who have no idea who it is. Because for us, when we run campaigns, highest percentage of our, our ad spend is going to cold audiences or prospecting audiences anyways. So again, we don't tell them about this sale until we're about a week out because we, we have a significant hit on revenue. So we time this perfectly. And then also we'll adjust and I'll show you guys a calculator. The, the budget we have based off these certain times so that we still get the option that we need and when we need it. Okay, then when you're one week out, then you can go ahead and go after everyone, the most recent people, the most recent purchasers, because they will buy again. And again, from there, just exclude anyone who messaged the page or your PSIDs. But I cannot overstate this enough, is two days out, start teasing it. When you're two, when you're two to three days out, start doing countdowns, um, double, triple down on your email sends these people, triple down on your social organic posting because when you're this close to it, because these people have waited for so long, you want to accelerate the value and the content that you get to them so that you're constantly front of mind for two days straight. Okay. Ray, when you say uh, you, ex uh, you exclude PSIDs one week out, so you're starting with your messenger campaigns two days out? Uh, yes. So what we so what we do is, and this goes into the tactic of actual like running the ads, yeah. is you know, we have people opt in. We're keeping them warm, and this is a collaboration with the brand and us. And then two days out, what we want to do is we actually we want them to re-engage with us at a minimum of twenty four hours before, so we can take advantage of the twenty four hour window. Yeah. So what we'll do is we will run um, sponsored messages to them. We will run uh, like a link click ad or a page post engagement or a video view. Uh, we'll do an email, we'll do an SMS because we want them to come back in and engage with us again. And so we'll do that for two days straight. Um, but then the last 24 hours, that's when we'll try to do it. Okay, guys, we're getting 24 hours. Here we go. You know, and we'll think of, we'll think of some way to get them to re-engage again because we do that because the, the most – if we can keep ourselves top of mind, they'll be more than likely to be waiting at their computer or their phone when the sale actually goes by. Yeah. So the two days out, that's where I've said it already, is 
do whatever you can to get them to opt again, opt in again, because even though you might have their email or phone number, again, omni-channel approach. Well, I, you will want to send them a 24-hour message that's promotional and an SMS and an email and an ad, right? You want to make sure you cover all your bases. 100%. 100%. Guys, if you got any questions, in the, uh, drop them in the comments. I know, uh, Ray, uh, Andy Gwynn has got a question. Have you ever yes. used Kickstarter for a product launch? Actually, we have. We actually have a really good flow for that. So what, what we did for the Kickstarter campaign was actually they opted in, and it was actually a, somewhat of a competition as well to where for certain people that entered, they would, and this is value adding, we would give them like an additional product for free, or they get entered into some kind of sweepstakes or whatever. But yeah, bot flows work out really well. We actually did it for a watch company, and they 2 x what their Kickstarter goal was mm -hmm. because both we ran the ads, getting people aware of it, and then they, they came in, and we added additional value. But then when they added additional value, and this is back when you had the 24 plus one, is we would then give them additional value by explaining to them like why this watch is the best, why they want to buy this watch, what is the inspiration behind it, you know, just trying to add that additional value. And so we did that up until the actual launch. Epic. Epic. Cool. And then lastly is, like I said, keep your people warm. So let me show you guys lastly is a, a little bit of the examples of adding value. So these are just one of four of the examples where after you get people to engage, do a surprise giveaway. So this particular brand, what they did is after people opted in, we then sent them a 24-hour message and said, hey, guys, we have a special announcement just for you, for the people who are waiting for this product launch. And they said, and they, they did a Facebook Live, they showed the product, guys, we're gonna give this away as well. Or the first 10 of you that buy are gonna give this away, right? Again, that's just adding more value to them. And so what we like to do is, work with the brand and say, okay, what's what's all of that can add leading up to this launch? And then we space it out so that, think of it like momentum. The momentum builds where not only building up hype, but you're adding more value, huh? more value, huh? one more value. Another yeah, one is- specific tools like those giveaways? Um, honestly, no. So a few of them use apps yeah. and, and that's the easiest way to do it, to be honest with you. I don't have the name on top of my head, but a few of them use apps, a few of them, just do it the tried and true manual way with the first 10 people that order once it goes live or first 10 people that order from that specific product, they will then just add it into their box with that freebie. Nice. Okay. Another way to add value is talk about the inspiration behind it. Talk about, you know, in this particular client, what they do is, you know, they make wall decals for kids' rooms and to add value, they would, they would, they would hand paint the decals and offer that away as a freebie or additional value. Another one is to add actual monetary value, saying not only are you guys going to do this new, get this new apparel, but also what we're going to do is we're going to add in a giveaway sweepstakes. We're going to add in um, samples to our pre-supplement. We're going to add all this stuff so that the person, they're getting a lot of value for one price. And then another one, the easiest example is to offer a free something with that product. So for example, this particular client, what they did was not only the people opt in for this product launch, but because they opted in, they then added additional value by saying, guys, also, we didn't tell you this, but now that you're here, we're also giving away a free item with your purchase, right? Adding in that extra value. Okay, so before we actually dive into the flow, there's a few uh, must do's. These are the things that you cannot do this well if you don't do these things. Number one, always capture data. Me and Robert talked about that at the beginning. But in order for this to work, you have to have their data because you have to do omni-channel. Do a minimum of two psychological triggers. If you don't do psychological triggers, this will not work. And like I said, the key is keeping the audience engaged, top of mind constantly. And then lastly, always adhere to a 24-hour rule. Always. always. <laughs> cool. So that is it, my friend. I would love to show you guys the flow or answer any questions. Dude, this was epic. I mean, this was sort of this was sort of marketing, not not even marketing one on one, but sort of the value you shared there on how you can keep your audiences engaged and 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 sort of the um, the inspiration you gave on how to keep the momentum going was fire. I I was like, uh, we need to talk about 
whatever, we need to talk about stuff. Um, uh, do we have any questions here? So Andy Gwynn had the question there. Danny Young, when they opt in to offer a lead magnet pretty quickly to get their email address from the way capture, the conversion really well. That's the question, it's more sort of a remark there. Um, guys, if you got any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, my question would be, hold on, let me just double check. My question would be, I don't think you touched upon that, but that's sort of a burning question. I know it's, it, for me, but for other people probably as well, is how are you going to attribute the actual sales? How ah, you, the attribute. You know, oh. That's one thing I don't know. You got to go there. Don't you? Yeah. I, 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 well, we still got some time. At least I got some time. People, we're still here. All right. So anyone who's watching, if you work with clients, or this is, your, this is your own brand, for example. You will face this because you're wondering, I did all this work, I spent all this money, how do I know these people bought? Yeah. Okay. So there's three ways you can get attribution, and then, I'll, then I'll, I'll tell you those three ways, and I'll tell you how we look at it when we plan this out for our clients. So the first one is, if you're running some kind of ads, Facebook will, for example, they will attribute someone who you know clicked on the ad and then came into your flow, but the attribution is going to be terrible. It's going to be maybe 10%, maybe 20%. It's just it's not going to roll back and give the credit to the ad. The second way is if you use if you use ManyChat, ManyChat's pixel, but even then the attribution there, it's eh, it's not that great. Do you and know then the attribution window of ManyChat pixel because that's something I just didn't figure out yet. My understanding was that it was um, seven day click, one day view. Okay, cool. That's my understanding. Okay. And then uh, the third way, which is the way that we use, is an, there's another reason why I'm very anal when it comes to caption data. The reason why is I don't le like to leave anything up to chance. So even though this presentation, I showed you guys how we do things and like you know do this, do this on this time frame, I don't want to leave things up to chance. So the best way to do it is the reason why you capture data is many chess got a feature. And that's where you can any data you capture, you can send to a Google Sheet. So what we do for every brand is every time we launch these things, we always keep all the data we capture in a Google Sheet. Why, you may ask? Because then all you have to do is export the order. All you have to do is export the orders, do a simple function in Google Sheet, a V lookup, and you can see who actually bought. That's how we can measure some of these opt-in flows have a 14 or 20% conversion rate because we're literally seeing, okay, who opted in, who bought. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, exactly. And the only thing you, you got to be careful you don't get into the discussion that there's sort of a, a, a sort of a duplicate attribution. No, it will be attributed in the ads manager because they saw your ad, but sort of it's a 360 sort of it's a 360 view. Oh, I hate those discussions, man. But I love this. I mean, just make sure you get that data in that sheet. And then you're able to make the comparison, and you can actually see by name who actually made a purchase. Yeah. And so what we do here, let me. I'll actually, I don't know if you guys want to see it and show you guys. I got, uh, got a quick question there for you, Ray. Andy, Andy Gwynn, are you A/B testing for every single post or message? We we not every single one we are a B, we have a b testing initiatives so for example at the beginning of this live me and we talked about what's the best way to get data and should it be gated content should it be drip fed to get people's data so that's something that we are a and b testing but we don't a b and test every single flow so for example this product launch formula we tested it a lot up to this point and so we may not be testing the actual flow but what we're testing is maybe a different initiative inside of it. But uh, it just depends on the circumstance and the situation if we actually A, B, and test it. But when it comes to like our product launch formula, like the actual flows, we don't we don't test those so much because we've already spent a year testing it up to this point. Cool. That was a great question. Andy. Other stuff. I got another question because what you mentioned yeah. super interesting is the psychological triggers. Um, have you uh, do you have any books or content you can recommend to learn more about that sort of psychological triggers that trigger um, specific purchase behavior or I want to have that because what the sort of the example you gave I love that one is two thousand of you guys signed up 
we got only 1,000 available. And I and let's assume this is sort of isn't false scarcity because that's not gonna yeah. that's not gonna that's not gonna run for a long time. Do you have sure. any books or content that you could sort of share here that we can tap into to learn more about those psychological triggers? Absolutely. Yeah. So some of my favorite is the art of advertising. Honestly, like even I got some gold nuggets out of the Harmon Brothers Poop to Gold, for example. Like I think that one. They they go into script for writing for videos, how to do those like actually write scripts. But there's a lot of gold nuggets that you can pull away from that. Um, and then and honestly, the, and the best one is to be honest with you is going to be going through other people's marketing content, their landing pages, their flows. And so, for example, you got, you guys don't see it, but I actually have a book right here. That's what I use. Like when I go through this stuff, like I'm writing down ideas and like you have to push your mind and build new neuron connectors to think that way. And so the best way to do this, is if you see something that's really cool, like, oh, that's really cool. Then force yourself, okay, what would be my spin on it? What would be my angle on it? And then that's like how you build that ability that it's like that muscle memory to be able to do those psychological triggers also and testing, documenting, revising. But I say those two books I found really helpful for. It. I love it. So the Harmon Brothers and the Art of Advertising? Yep. I'm just dropping it here. Art of Advertising. Let me just drop there. I've got fat fingers, guys, so bear with me there. I dropped it in the comments. Thanks, dude. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. So I'll have a, a big question for you, Rutger, is have – you use any psychological triggers that you seem to work really well now that you've seen like kind of our mind map of how that works how you draw any connections like oh yeah i've used that before oh i've used that before well what i've seen working sort of it's a double-edged sword what i've seen working really well are giveaways and mm -hmm. um, uh, leaderboards people want to win and people are sort of um, and so that's one thing. The other thing what I've seen working really well is incentivize a specific value in return for more data. And that's sort of close to the, the giveaway. Um, for example, we got a flow that's working really well. That is every answer you question, sorry, every question you answer, you can increase the value of your coupon code. Interesting. And what we see is people just finish that flow. And they give data and what we can do with that data we can create segments of that data and obviously the questions are being asked <clears throat> sorry the questions are asked but we ask the questions that enable us to create specific segments of our audience and with those segments we are able to create better marketing not channels but marketing um what's it called um marketing segments so I, I draw a blank there we can create better campaigns for example one of the questions we ask is what's your uh, what does your household look like you got kids if somebody has kids this is stuff you're not able to get from website custom audiences or interest targeting or whatever but when you have kids and you gotta <clears throat> look at the bigger picture here if you would have a, a apparel store that sells kids stuff you want to know who in your audience exactly has kids. So when you're doing a product launch or when you have a flash sale or whatever for let's say kids shoes, you're able to target only those people. People will run for value and yes. often value is a specific coupon, whether it's monetary value or free shipping or whatever it is, people will give data for that. And if you do that sort of in a genuine way, 100% you get more information from them. And I think the information game is key here. And that's where chat in general excels. If you're doing it right, if you're doing it in the conversational way, sort of in an intuitive way. Yeah, that's really interesting. Are you, I love to, maybe you tell your audience, are, are you are you dynamically creating those coupon codes or do you do it ahead of time so that if they hit a certain value based off the question, then they get this code. Yeah. So what we do, so what we can do is for every question they answer, you can add a specific sort of, you can increase the value in a, in a custom field. And then you can create those, you can create those coupons. So you will be, you, you would have it sort of preset in, um, let's say, 
10 off, 20 off, 30 off, 40 off, 50 off, whatever, to, where, to wherever you want to go. And then every question you answer would hit one of those potential five coupons that are available. Hmm. So let's say the shop will accept 10 off, 20 off, 30 off, 40 off, 50 off, whatever. And then sort of every outcome will be one of those five. Wow. You would... What kind of completion rate are you saying? Sorry? What kind of completion rate are you saying? Close to 70, 80%. That's really good. The thing is, but it's, it's sort of, and it's a, it's a, people can make a choice. Hey, do you want to answer the next question? Yes or no. If you answer the next question, you'll get extra 10%. If not, no problem. Just click here and we'll generate your coupon for you. So I still have um, a flow that I can show your audience. And guys, this flow, this is a template that I'm going to make available for you guys to actually download into your ManyChat account. It'll be a link that I'll put in the comments, and you guys Do can it. just download. Um, a question I have for you, Rudger, is what are you seeing? What are you seeing working really well for e-commerce brands, and what do you see as the biggest missed opportunity for them? Ooh, um, customer support. Mm. I mean, dude. Look, I'm not on the media buying side of things. I, I sort of abandoned the media buying side a, a while ago. But customer support, proactive customer support for eco for brands in general, that is missed opportunity for 100%. Go to, go to five e-coms. Go to five shops right now. No, or wait five minutes and then, <laughs> then go there. And try to engage with them in chat and get a, a sort of a relevant answer within a minute and then report back to me what the score is. I can almost guarantee you that the majority, so let's say 90%, 80% of those shops are not a, or they don't even have a chat or you're still waiting on an answer in the next 24, off 24 hours. And that is, in my opinion, a missed opportunity because you're just ignoring your future clients, your prospects, and your existing clients, because we're just moving back to the omni-channel strategy here. We, as brand owners or business or brand owners, business owners should focus more on what their clients, their future clients and their existing clients, how they want to engage with the brand versus, fuck it, just send me an email or give me a call. If you're sort of pushing people towards those two channels, and your competitor who is offering other ways to engage, to get information, ask questions, whatever, they probably will go there at some point, sooner than later. And we shouldn't, and this is Stephen Black, this is what I learned from Stephen, is brands cannot, should not, look, brands, most, a lot of brands out there sell the same products and services. You guys know this. Oh yeah. We should not, a brand should not compete on price. Nope. But it's actually, it's a guarantee to make you lose long term. There you go. Compete on customer service, pre-purchase, post-purchase. And it isn't that difficult, guys. It isn't that freaking difficult. Be there, be available when your client, pre-purchase, post-purchase, when they need you through the channel, they want to engage with you. And if you're able to do that, if you're able sort of to pave the road for that, you're halfway there. Because fair chance your competition isn't doing it. Yeah. And then when you engage and you reply, start a conversation, you build that trust, you're gonna get more revenue. People trust you, they like you, and they will it will be more loyal. It's funny you say that. There's a, a quote internally that we often look at when in, in terms of providing just a great experience, and this is also related to um, the relationship, customer service relationship. It is actually from Jeff Bezos in 1998 to his shareholders where he said, our customer will be loyal to us up until the point where they find a better service or customer experience somewhere else. Nice. So for all you guys, product, like there's so many manufacturers out there that can make whatever the heck you guys make. But the things that are gonna always stand out is how you treat your people, how they feel when you're treating them. And then also you, and that's what we also tell our, our brands is, 
guys, like make, make yourself a visible in the brand because you are the thing that people can never steal. No one can steal a person, but they can steal a product. So make your experience really good and then make sure your brand story is really solid because they can't steal that. Uh, dude, this is sort of preaching to the choir, and this is uh, this is sort of what B4E is all about. It is sort of it's enabling brands to uh, uh, engage in, in, in chat support and creating those experiences. And everything you just mentioned, this is where everything comes together. It's not about sort of list building, client acquisition, and trying to sell the most as much as possible. No, it's all about creating those experiences. And, and when, correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, but if you're able to create that amazing experience sort of as a core value, if, you, if a core value of your brand, your business is um, delivering an amazing experience, whatever the fuck that amazing experience may be, then it will be so much easier to sell products, services to sort of your audience because oh, you're being well, real from the get-go. There's a, there's a few brands that we've worked that come to my mind where they may not only their customer service, so the customer service is outstanding, right? So like they do everything to serve their people. They make them feel good. They uh, there's a lot that goes with that. I'm not going to go into like what that what that looks like, but the experience of when people buy after they buy. But to go with what you said is that it comes to the point where these people are so loyal because of the experience and the product. Let's be honest, their the, the product is average. Like it's okay, it's a good product. It should be good. Your product should be good. I mean, let's let's yeah, not. It's, it's, yeah, it is a good product. Is it? Is it? You know, it, it's like it's supplement. It's it's shoes. It's something that they can get somewhere else. So the thing that why they buy from them is the experience. It's also the the brand story. But it's got to the point to where people buy from them almost out of, I'm, I'm gonna use the term guilt because they're giving so much value to these people where, the, I mean, the, they take pictures, and we tell our brands that have Facebook groups, and so like we see a lot of interaction. They're taking pictures of like, they're, they're, they're stocked full of, of all these products that they have, or if it's a t-shirt brand, they own like 20 of their t-shirts because they buy because like they just fall in love with them and the experience, and like now they buy out of like guilt. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm a little bit different. I sort of, I'm not that loyal. But Annika, my my wife, she was like, so we recently, so we had some cushions made for in the in the on the on the in the garden, whatever. And we got an email. Product was delivered, and at the same time we got an email. But it was a storytelling, personal email, personal email. And she was like, check out this email. How awesome is this? I mean, and then she said, look, I never read emails. And majority, I don't read emails. But when I get an email from these guys, I actually open it. Why? Because it's funny, it's engaging. Well, it's funny and, and it's engaging. And it was some, and, and the email that sort of was like, "Hey, you got your product today. We hope you enjoy it. Um, we're gonna touch base with you next week for a review for for, for for to get your feedback. In the meantime, if there's anything you need, click here and get in touch." Yeah. I thought that was that was brilliant, and that is proactive post purchase customer support, simple email written ones probably iterated a thousand times but that goes on autopilot and i guarantee you the next time we're gonna need sort of custom-made cushions where we're we gonna go we're gonna go there can we get those cushions the same ones somewhere else 100 percent. but they sort of planted the seed of an awesome brand thinking sort of just resonating with us and it's so, it's not simple because if it was simple, everybody would do it. But as soon as you start sort of spending a little bit more time on thinking about that, then you will, you will create more loyal customers. Can I say? One, to add, add to that, one of the best examples I've seen is because a brand did their, did their work and understood their customer, asked them questions like, why, why do you buy from us? For example, in apparel, I bought because your the theme of your, your t-shirts, the, they're funny, whatever. It's like, that's why they buy, okay? So the value that they get is that they personally find it funny or they relate to it. So this brand, what they did is they created a whole, a whole group or a flow or and a, an Instagram account, for example, just on fun stuff, not asking for a sale. So, so they say, in the meantime, while you know, you're waiting for us to email you again, or whatever that is, they said, here, go just have some laughs. 
go do this. Here, just just go do that, right? They're just adding to that experience. And I know that seems daunting, but if once you know why people buy from you, they'll stick around if you add the value, if you, if you keep the value coming. I love that, man. Um, I think we're going to, the world is crazy right now. I love it. James Van Houten, the, the world is crazy right now. I love it. James, we love it too. I'm not sure if there was a question there, but um, we're almost 90 minutes into it. I think we can talk for hours. Um, yeah. I just want to open up the floor for some questions. Guys, I know we, got, we still got some people on here. Um, if you got any questions, Mary, Al, what's up, Al? Victoria, James, Laura's there as well. My LA is waking up. Dimitri, Danny, looks like you guys are still here. Um, drop any questions in the comments. Um, in the meantime, I'm just gonna, uh, I wanted to just sort of say, dude, thank you for this value. I love it. Well, I mean, and uh, if you, like I said, you guys, I'll, I'll show you real quick because we're kind of running out of, oh, Mary. Yeah, Mary the the question. Uh, right. when, when do we see the you show? Know. Oh, Rugger, I just shared my screen. Yeah. Let me know when you can see it. Um, hold on. Should be there now. All right, so Mary and everyone else is watching. So this is the actual template flow that we use. And what I'll do is I'll add a link in the comments of this live and where you can download this into your account. What I'll also do is I'll, I'll do a quick Loom video walking you guys through how you can actually use this flow in your marketing. But essentially, this goes through the opt-in, which we talked about earlier. It goes into the actual data capture, how you can get the email, get the SMS. We even have templated copy for you so you don't have to use it, but for some of you guys that will get value from it. And then we actually go through, if you want to be compliant, getting their SMS or their email, uh, we can have the template that you can use to be compliant for SMS and email. And then we actually go through uh, over here on the right side is actually then after you get their data, how can you start the engagement process by Again, you can use carousel cards or what have you, but how do you start that process to get them engaged? And look, so once you have your, their, their content, then you can actually do the off-channel approach that I talked to you guys about. But like I said, this will be in the comments of the live after the live is over, and there'll be a video inside this template where you can watch a video recording of actually how to use it, how to execute it. And then like always, if you guys have any questions, I'm in Rutgers group, Bots for Beers. Definitely let us ask me, ask Rutger. We're here for you guys. 100%. So, uh, guys, just a quick recap on that. Everything will will be available in the units section of the group, Bots and Beers, um, in the next whatever. It's not going to be today. Um, in the next couple of days, it will be there. Everybody will get a notification in probably SMS, email, maybe an ad. We'll, um, we'll make sure everybody gets this. If you have any questions, guys, in regards to Victoria, you're more than welcome. Um, if you've got any questions in regards to strategy, ads, whatever you want to ask, make sure you reach out to Ray. Um, you can hit him up in the group. You can hit him up directly. I don't know if that's, that's a good advice, but try it. See if he responds. Probably he does. Um, Ray, for now. Dude, we're 90 minutes in. I know we can talk for another another 90 minutes easy, but I want to thank you for your time, for the absolute mad value bumps you dropped here. Dropped here. And um, what I loved most about this, besides that you're an awesome guy and you spend the time being here, are the psychological triggers. That was, that was sort of fun. And I truly think that that is something we as brand owners, marketers, agency owners, whatever, we should... We should spend some time in, we should spend more time on learning more about the psychological triggers and incorporate them, weave them in to the marketing campaigns we were whipping up, whether it's for ourselves or our clients, because I think those little things, those little triggers are actually making the big difference there. So thank Absolutely. you for that. It's the secret sauce, I'm telling you, that's what works. Awesome. Are you going to share the slide deck as well? Yeah, so I'll share the slide deck, everybody. I'll also give you guys the bot template, with the video. And then, like always, if you have any questions, use Boss and Beers. I'm in there. We're there for you. Right on. Ray, thanks. Nicole, thank you for being here. Great show. Yeah, this was an awesome show. We could go on, but for now, we're just going to wrap it up. Uh, Nicole, Victoria, Laura, Mary, um, thank you for being here. Again, if you have any questions, this is now the time to drop them. 
Ray is here live. And if you don't have any questions, guys, we're just going to wrap this up. Make sure you comment. You can comment in the replays. Make sure you tag me or Ray, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Ray, brother, thank you so much. Have a great one. And um, again, thanks for being here, man. Well, thanks for having me, Rudger. Appreciate it. Right on, man.